Today, it is a huge joy to have Dr. Benini, our partner, uh, minister from the church in Gilgal Evangelical in Kigali. And along uh, with him, uh, Pelagi, uh, Pelagi uh, who is kindly going to interpret uh, for him today. So a warm welcome to Benini and Pelagi. Today's theme is forgiveness, which of course is hugely relevant for Rwanda and for ourselves. Our Bible reading this morning is going to be projected on the screens, but if you wish to follow it, uh, those are the pages that you will find it in the Pew Bibles. So first of all, we're going to read from Matthew chapter 6, and then a couple of verses, first of all from Mark, and then from 1 John. These are on Dr. Benini's theme of forgiveness. So first of all from Matthew chapter 6, and reading from verse 9. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And then from Mark chapter 11, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. And then finally from 1 John chapter 1, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We pray that God will give us understanding of these readings from His Holy Word. We also thank the Lord for this morning. We are thanking uh, Pastor Frank for the right messages given to us. The words we spoken this morning, they're quite a bit long, but they have one meaning. The one word emphasize everything is that the forgiveness. In those words we find in Mark, Matthew, and okay, Matthew, which is Matthew, yeah. they all have one word, which is forgiveness. Those are the ones we're going to talk about this morning. You see, when you have your hand, five hands, Five fingers or one hand. Five words are going to be about forgiveness. The first one. The one we spoke about is when you forgive others, the Lord will forgive you as well. If, if you don't forgive others, the Lord will not want to forgive you at all. Those words are very clear in the Bible. Forgive others, then God will forgive you. The second one, 
There's a place we get strength when we give, we do forgive. The first one, why do we forgive? It's because we all weak and we need others to forgive us as well. Even though in Africa and Europe we have three enemies. The first one is Satan. The second one is the world we live in. The third one is this human body we, we wear each every day. The three enemies those three things says they make you feel like when you sin against somebody you want them to forgive you but there's the other way around. Second one we have somewhere we get the strength from. Jesus on the cross, he said three things. That main one he's going to speak about is the one we need to forgive. Please, Lord, forgive them because they don't know what they have done. The ones who really the ones who were committed against Jesus, they were there. Forgive them because they really didn't know what they were doing. Are you telling me that those people didn't know what they were doing? Do you remember that time when they somebody went and get pinned Jesus side. And the side of Jesus, the blood came and the water came out. That eyes were broken, I think were hurt, the eyes of that person. The blood when it split from Jesus side, I think it went in his eyes and it was open and healed. And that one also, Jesus said, forgive him as well because he didn't know what he was doing. Remember again, that thief who was on that cross. And when he said to Jesus, remember, today we'll be in paradise together. Can you Remember, can you even imagine how much that sin was? And, and that moment, for that second, Jesus' response was, we'll be together in heaven. If, when we see what Jesus has done on the cross, and you can see how he has been treated, that will make you to forgive others. And the third one, why we need to forgive is because we have already been forgiven for so many things which has been done to us. Let us talk to, us, let us talk to you a little bit about Rwanda. In 1994, there was a genocide. Let me talk to you about how the forgiveness has made impact in Rwanda today. Genocide was created by the Rwandan themselves. And they have been done between themselves, Rwandanese. It was stopped by the Rwandans. Rwanda genocide was created by a small country, which is Rwanda as a small place. If you see the people who knew each other, the culture of Rwandans, they really greet each other. They know each other. Everyone knows one another. It was made within three months. 
Tekereza nawe mu mezi atatu uwafa abantu bangana na bamwe muri Belfast bose. Imagine yourself within 3 months the whole Belfast be ex. Mu mezi atatu. Within 3 months. Ikindi genocide ikoranwa no bugome burenze uko umuntu yatekereza. Again genocide was uh, made by the hatred and uh, hatred. Tekereza ngo kuvuga ngo umwana kwica se they imagine a child to kill his father. The parents kill their children. I know myself that there's a parents who kill his own of his wife, his children, and that's because they married a different tribe. And one of the things has happened, people will eat each other's flesh, like flesh. And most of those ones we are talking about, they belong to the same church. Nobody wants from outside, but they belong to each other from the same church. When you go back to Rwanda, you'll find those churches which has been able to, you know, to massacre so many people within those church. In Just think a little bit, take a moment to think and imagine what country would you think it could be at that time? What kind of picture would you have if you're trying to imagine? Now, let me take you back to now what, how Rwanda is today. There are two things has happened within that time. There's a willingness from the leadership but that the willingness of the leadership to get people togetherness, when you have the willing of doing something, and the power and the strength, it will come after you, but you have to have willing. There's another thing happened. The church stood by and they really preach the word of God. It doesn't matter if the people were killed within the church. They didn't stay and be in a, that situation. They remember that the church, which is the place they used to kill, but they remember the word of God after that. And they remind the church that Jesus will be the same. Will be the same that moment and today and tomorrow. Even whenever things happen, Jesus was there and he'll be the answer afterwards. I remember last year. Barometer is a kind of uh, uh, plan, I think, yeah, which you get people to ask them how the, where they are, how they are doing within that kind of reconciliation. Now they find out from last year, 90% of people who are into that idea of reconciliation, 90%. Wow, and when you go to these churches, my brothers, you find this is going on and it's true. It's, it's going on. And most of them is to see the testimony of the people who have been through it, but who's coming out of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. If if you go back, there's a website which has given to people to really see which has happened, things has happened about reconciliation. 
the testimony and everything's going on and there is a website for it. That's one that I'm going to get now. Oh, yeah. Your website. Your website. Your website. Your website. Unity and Reconciliation. Unity and Reconciliation. Victim to victory. Vic oh, victim to victory. In that website. That website is really to show you everything, how people have forgiven, how people have been forgiven and forgiving others. Fourth one. Every time we forgive, and for us, is a healing for our soul as well. Many times when we don't forgive, you take that person who you're carrying every single morning, every single day, on your head. Imagine taking Pastor Banini on your head, carrying him every day in your life. That is not easy. But when you forgive, you put him down, you give him a rest. And you can have a sleep. Then you can breathe. That is what is going on in Rwanda for so many people. I remember Gandhi in yeah. India. I to I I Teeth to teeth. The India will be with people who don't have eyes and those people who have lost their teeth. Okay. Those people who have India now, it was not rich. It doesn't have really much going on. But because they decided to follow, not eye to eye and the teeth to teeth, India is moving forward. When you forgive, now then you can feel at ease. Last one. Now, now think about it in your own life. I have something has hurt me. In one, in Rwanda, we speak about the genocide. We don't know what is going on here in Belfast. Because it's the first time we are landing to Belfast. But whatever it is, whatever it is has hurt you in your journey. It could be here in a church, within your church service, it could be in your family members, in your relationship, it could be in your workplace. There's so many things come to our way. Because we have three enemies, it's the, the world we live in, flesh, and then the devil. Those things must have hurt you somewhere. The message we have today is just we can forgive. Yeah, yeah. The last and the other time is talking about is to meet those ones who have hurt you. The one thing he's talking about, about Rwanda, in a prison, when somebody asks forgiveness in Rwanda, in a prison, they reduce the sentence. Most of the time, when you take a step for the ones who have hurt you, when you take that step towards the one who hurt you, it gives the opportunity that it can come closer to you, that you can build that. They can solve them, Let me please ask you, wherever you are, please stand up. Please think about somebody who hasn't, you haven't had the time to forgive. That we can pray that the Lord will help you to make that step. And that you can make that step to forgive that person or whoever it is and whatever it is.
and all the good things. God bless you. Let's pray. Let's pray, please. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you because you're the one who gives forgiveness and reconciliation. We pray that each one of us, if within our heart, because you're the one who has that key of forgiving, and those ones we don't, when we can't, dear Lord Jesus, you can, you are able, more than able. You know Belfast, you see everything is going on in Belfast, you are the one is more than able. We thank you, Jesus, that you're going to do wonders. Amen. In your precious name we pray, amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father, we praise you that we are your forgiven people. Through your mercy alone, poured out generously on us through Christ our Lord. And Father, we praise you too for the work of your spirit in our lives and in the lives of our Rwandan brothers and sisters. And Father, we pray, may your kingdom come. Father, we want to pray for the progress of the gospel and the growth of your church here in Belfast and among the people of Rwanda and especially in Gilgal Evangelical Church. We pray for our engagement with the local community, thinking particularly of our open day coming up next week. And we pray that you'll help us to be people who are able to share the message of reconciliation and peace with you uh, through that. We pray for our growth in grace. Lord, may we and our brothers and sisters in Rwanda uh, know more of your love and mercy for us and more of what it looks like to live lives shaped by that gospel of grace. And Father, we want to pray for pastors of both churches and the wider leadership teams. We pray that you'll grow our leaders in leadership skills and their ability to manage the work of your church. We pray you'll in, uh, give them ever-increasing confidence in the work of the Holy Spirit as they labor in the ministry of the word and in prayer. And Father, we pray that you'll make them ever more diligent examples of the pursuit of godliness. Since we know that bodily training is of some value, but godliness has value for both for this life and the life to come. And Father, we pray for your will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Our Lord says, blessed are the peacemakers. And so we pray that the people of Gilgal Evangelical Church and Bloomfield Presbyterian Church would be people of peace. May we be people who live out the gospel of forgiveness and reconciliation in our homes, in our families, in our workplaces, our communities, and our church. May we be people who take the first step towards those who have wronged us. And we pray that you'll uh, give us uh, wisdom and willingness to serve and learn from each other as we consider the future of our partnership between our churches. And Father, as we pray for your will to be done, we want to remember the governments of both of our countries this morning. We pray for Pres President Paul Kagame and the uh, Prime Minister Edward Nigarenti, uh, the Queen of uh, this country, the Prime Minister Theresa May, and the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, Karen Bradley. We pray that you would give them a deep understanding of their people and their needs, an awareness of the great responsibility they bear under you for leading and serving their countries. And may you give them a strong willingness to give space to your church, to believe, to live out, and to share the good news of the gospel, even where some would seek to restrict it. Our Father, please give us today our daily bread. We thank you for feeding us spiritually through our brother this morning. And now we pray that you'd give us all the physical things that we need for our journey. May we be well in our bodies as well as in our souls. And so we pray for those in special need in our church communities. For our brothers and sisters in Rwanda, we pray for those who are suffering from malnutrition, uh, the effects of HIV and AIDS, 
those suffering from drug addiction, and those suffering from the genocide. And here in Belfast, we pray especially for those suffering from loneliness, from drug addiction, from people trafficking, and those who are suffering from the effects of the troubles. And Father, for people in both of our churches, we pray for those who are suffering from unemployment. And we pray for reduced unemployment, for growing entrepreneurship and ability to do business and be productive. And for those in Rwanda in particular, we pray for street vendors to be able to be increasingly doing productive work. And our Father, we do want to pray as well for Dr. Benini as he returns home. We know that he'll be tired from his journey, but we pray that he might return refreshed in spirit uh, from being with us. And we ask all this, asking that you forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and that you lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Help us to lay down our grudges and guide our steps in the path of peace. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.